Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is a true inspiration and one of the amazing black men working hard to change the narrative and negative images in the media of our young kings and queens. He's an instrumental part of the Harvard University debate team and the founder of the Harvard Diversity Project. Yes. Please welcome to the show avid educator and mentor, Brandon Fleming. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. Brandon, you're doing big things. Thank you, I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Brandon, you were once labeled as an at-risk teen. Now, what were some of the obstacles that you had to push through to become the man that we're sitting here looking at today? You know, it's, it's quite the paradox that I even landed in education wow. because I hated everything about school. Oh, my God. Um, I hated teachers. Um, I hated academics. Mm. Um, I didn't want to be there because of the way I felt when I was there. You mm -hmm. know, I, I dealt with a lot of trauma as a kid mm -hmm. um, and, and abuse that, that manifested in disruptive and deviant behaviors mm -hmm. uh, in the classroom. And I wow. never had a teacher that, that was able to look beyond what I showed them on, on the outside right. um, to be able to identify and activate the potential that was latent wow. on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, and that is precisely the role uh, of an educator. Um, and that is what I seek and aspire to do for my students. And so what saved my life and pulled me out of the streets was, mm -hmm. was basketball. Because yeah. I had a promising athletic career. So we talked a little bit about basketball, and uh, you it was very promising for you. You were uh, very happy in that capacity, but then something happened, and you had a very bad injury, and you fell into a depression. What was that critical moment like for you, and how did you excel? I did. You know, all my life, I dealt with people telling me what I was not and, and what I would never become. And, and basketball was my only opportunity to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was my only um, incentive for actually matriculating to college. Mm -hmm. And so finally, I have an opportunity to show everybody that I'm going to do something. I'm going to make something of my life. And I, I get to college, and it's training camp during the summer, and we're going hard in practice. And all of a sudden, I tear my patellar tendon in my knee. Oh, wow. and, and just like that, my career was over. All my life, I have been waiting for this moment. And so I subsequently find myself dropping out of school. Mm -hmm. um, so now I went from being an athlete risk youth to now being a college dropout and now I'm spending my life as an 18 year old in a vitamin factory on an assembly line working 10 hours a day and six days a week. Oh my God. Um, and, and so quite honestly I, I thought I was a failure mm -hmm. and I thought at that moment I proved everybody right about me that I would never amount to anything and so I decided to give up um, and I attempted suicide. Oh my goodness. What made you, when you after that attempt what what clicked in your mind and said no you're more than this you can do different you can you can you can have that life that you want yeah you know i remember like it was yesterday because i was sitting on that assembly line um working and one of my co-workers looked at me and she said young man how old are you and i said i'm 18 years old and she said what are you doing in this assembly line mm -hmm. and i said i actually dropped out of college she said you did what and she said i want you to look around this plant do you understand what the people in this plant would have done to have the one opportunity that you just willingly relinquished? Ooh, wow. she got you and, together. And yeah. She got me together real All quick. And so, and so when I, when I realized that, I said, wow, you know, and after I attempted suicide, you know, I, I overdosed on pills and I woke up in the hospital bed with tubes attached to my arms and I was looking up at the ceiling with streams of tears coming down my face. And I made a promise to myself and I made a promise to God that if I was ever given another opportunity that I would do it differently. And in that moment, my passion was birthed in a moment of pain. Mm. And, and, and that is when I realized precisely what I was supposed to do with the rest of my life. My God, and the rest of your life, I mean, we are so glad that she got you together down yes. to the uh, vitamin so the assembly mm. line. Yeah. <laughs> because now you're down to the Harvard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And not just any school. Yeah. Harvard University yeah. with your Harvard Diversity project. Talk to us about what this project is and what it means for young black men. Well, we're changing the narrative and, and our mantra in the Harvard Diversity Project is that we want to show the world what it looks like when scholarship meets culture. Mm. What does that mean? That means that as a young black man and as a young black woman, you don't have to compromise the defining mm. characteristics of your culture to assimilate and conform to what society says a scholar should look like and sound like. Wow. And so yes. we want to show young black people that your black is beautiful. Mm -hmm. We want to show them that your black is brilliant yes. and there's nothing that you can achieve if you're only given an opportunity and access. My God, my God. Well, you have blessed us today yes, in so have. many ways, 
but you also have blessed this one gentleman. Would you join us, please? Yay! Hi. How are you? Introduce yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. My yes. name is Osazi Alkalik. I am a graduated um, member of Maynard Hallbrook Jackson High School, yeah. and I am a incoming freshman at Harvard University. This yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Come on! Come on! So, uh, Asazi, would you tell us what did the program mean uh, for you, and, 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 and how do you feel that it helped you to grow? Definitely. Well, um, in the program, um, a lot of um, myself and my peers um, recognize that it's more than just debate being a part of the program. Um, what we like to do and what we like to go by through this program is changing the narrative, as Mr. Fleming said, and making sure that we are able to fit our own definition of scholars and what that means for us and also um, living the way that we live. And so for me, what this program re represented was an opportunity to enlist in more than just myself and to serve a higher cause. And I'm grateful that I've been able to join Mr. Fleming in that pursuit and have been able to give back to my community in that matter. Brandon, what does this mean to sit and watch? I mean, to see what you have done, to just sit here in the face of this young man and know that you're partly responsible for him. You know, it's it's surreal, it's, it's euphoric because the, there's no greater joy that a teacher can experience than to watch his or her students blossom mm. and into everything they're meant to be. And, and we're teaching these kids to not just be scholars, to not just be debaters, to not just be leaders, but to be cultural ambassadors. Wow. You know, young people often can't be what they can't see. And so while I may not be able to put black people in your textbooks at school, what I can do is I can cultivate them and I can put them in front of your faces My God. so you can see that it's possible. My God, and, Brandon, and you've raised 300,000 in scholarships doing it too. And Brandon, we recognize your efforts. We know it's not easy task and applaud you for doing more information um, on to support Brandon's Harvard Diversity Project, follow him on Instagram at BP Fleming.